True Mothers, released in 2020, examines the many complicated aspects of adoption, especially adoption in Japan. A Tokyo couple have tried to, in every possible way, conceive a child and have finally been able to be approved as adoptive parents for a young boy. The movie interweaves different plot narratives. It also leaps back and forth in time. The film shows us the new parental joy of the couple as they face their insecurities that relate to their own biological son. And parallel to that, we follow a story where we through and through follow the birth mother of the couple of the couple's adoptive son from an unplanned pregnancy and judgment of, a, of the family members and wider Japanese society as a whole. Film director Naomi Kawasi adapted this film from a novel. According to the director, these women w these women were supposed to kind of reveal the aspects of Japanese society in that there are a lot of a lot of pr there's a lot of pride in family bloodline and family bl bond between the biological, which results in adopted people not being treated very well in Japan. The film uses a kind of characteristic of, of documentary style filmmaking that the director had used before throughout her career from the get-go. The filmmakers even managed to get real adopted people and hire them as actors in the film to give it that layer of reality. And this create this is interesting because the film utilizes and synthesizes a variety of different genres. Documentary filmmaking, narrative, and poetic filmmaking as well that build a unique style and aesthetic. Throughout her career, Kawasi has always been fascinated between the line between fact, fact and fiction, fiction, non-fiction, and approaching film with a documentarian gaze, as she put it. An example of the synthesis that I'm referring to is if you look how the film is able to use these poetic images, incorporating these images of scattered sunlight through trees, waves crashing as if attacking the characters, a way of capturing emotion in nature. As a filmmaker, in love with with nature and Kawasi displays the emotions behind nature whereas we usually only recognize or acknowledge emotion in humans and sometimes animals. Now we get to see nature as a living being. Kawasi from a cinematic point of view is asking the question how does scenery have emotion and one thing she had discussed in an interview is that she approaches the film the approach was that there are these memories that are implanted in nature as ancient human nature pieces and shards of memory that are carved in that environment she expresses she expresses that memory in a wonderful cinematic approach <laughs> Another director that I can contrast and compare with with regard to this would be Andrei Tarkovsky who was also in love with nature. However, Andrei Tarkovsky photographed nature and scenery with intention for primarily aesthetic purposes but often had symbolic and poetic results. For instance, using fire, for instance, using water or fire for means of symbolizing rebirth. All in all, Kawasi creates a fantastic film that's beautiful, that's poetic, that also feels extremely real. Even the smaller background characters feel real and fully fleshed out. And that's a credit to Kawasi's strength as a film director and her sensitivity as a film director. And what I want to do more on this channel is to bring focus to directors with this amount of strength that are from the international scene that don't get as much coverage. So uh, when we're move making a film, uh, we have to uh, spend two hours or so um, telling a story. And uh, in a way, you tr strive not to make the spectator, the person who's watching the film, uh, not to bore them. Um, but on the other hand, I'm not about uh, making a film that's a, like a roller coaster. Uh, I'm not trying to, uh, to achieve that. But uh, I would like to have the spectators uh, have time to think about things uh, during the, the film. However, if you give them too much to think about, then it, uh, there's no solution sometimes. And then that sort of tires them and uh, it becomes very tedious and people uh, start feeling sleepy. So that's uh, not a good thing either. 
uh, I guess what I'm trying to do is really build uh, sort of waves uh, in people's hearts or uh, what emotions are coming and going. And so the events, even in reality, in our daily lives happen. But what is important and what I'm trying to describe or depict in my films is the way that people uh, attach certain emotions to those events. Uh, it's just not just a succession of events, but the emotions that are attached to those events. And this is uh, what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to take the spectators on a journey with the characters in my film and so that they will experience the emotions that the characters are uh, uh, experiencing.